Terry Sproul here. I want to welcome you to my studio. Today I'm going to show you how to make this lovely art journal garden style page. Started off using Pale Ale Mem or Memory Mist. It's a permanent um, mist. And I'm also using distressed ink and a lava stain around the edges just to darken it up. And I'm using a um, palette knife or a spatula to add it into on my page. I'm going all around the edge and across the bottom really heavy, framing the center of my um, art journal page here. I'm also using an art journal that I handmade, which you can also find on my YouTube channel, which is youtube.com slash Terry Sproul and it's how to make an art journal video. I like to use the embossing paste because it dries a little quicker than molding paste. But it is very similar, and it'll take the heat a little better if you um, are impatient, like most of us artists are. And it will take a heat, um, heat, you know, heat tool very well, and it won't um, necessarily brown. Here I'm grabbing two shades of Stays On ink. Using Stays On, due to the fact that it will be a permanent ink, and a couple leaf stamps, and I'm just... Um, adding these stamps randomly around my edge, which will eventually become a vine. Right now I'm just adding a few, continuing to add to dry. Let that completely dry. Now I'm grabbing distressed ink again in a fire brick. You don't necessarily have to use distressed ink. Any type of ink pad will work for this. You're actually better off in an art journal using something that is more uh, permanent, but I was after the color more than I was after the ink pad per se. And I'm just using, um, you could use a makeup sponge here to add the um, color, the ink on top of the bricks. And if you use a really light hand, it'll grab just the top of the bricks because they are a little raised using the embossing paste from Dreamweaver. Now just to add a little depth, I'm going in with the walnut stain also and adding a little bit of that onto my bricks also. And again, just to add some little depth and there's a few different colors in there, not all just one color. And this is all you to do to get you depth and realism in your page. are a little dirty anyway, so I gotta make them a little dirty. Now I'm going back in again with the red, again, to add depth. So I'm getting a few pieces a little darker and a few a little lighter. Really happy with the way this turned out. Now I'm going in again using those stays on green ink pads. Oh, I guess actually I apologize. I'm grabbing some spring at this point. This is just regular um, twine that I had around the house. I happen to have a white twine and I happen to have a green twine. So I grabbed both of those and just started cutting some pretty long lengths of the um, colors of the string. These will become my vine here in a minute. I'm using golden gel medium in matte to go right around my edges where my um, vine will be and this will become my leaf. So again I'm putting it on with my palette knife but you could use a paintbrush if you're a little more comfortable with a paintbrush. So I'm just spreading that on around the edge. Now 
on grabbing my string and twisting it and curling it and just giving it a real organic look to it and adding that directly into my gel medium from gold. Using the palette knife here to just kind of push that string into the um, molding paste that I had laid down on the page it was giving me a little bit of problems of wanting to not stick down there, so the palette knife kind of allowed me to push it down without getting so much gel medium on my fingers. I'm going to do that exact same thing on this side of the page. Again, um, almost the Identical. I didn't put quite as much string on this side, but again, doing the exact same technique. Adding the string, giving some loops, making it very organic. Think of a vine when you're putting your string down, and that's what I was trying to do. Vines twist and curl and do all kinds of interesting looks. also dry completely clear even though it's showing white here on the page. But when it dries it will be clear. I'm adding a few more leaves because now that I have my my vines or string down it's allowing me to see where I need to add a few more of these leaves. And this is just a simple clear um, leaf stamp that I got from Hot Off the Press in their uh, that's called, I believe it's, I'm not sure what it's called, I believe it's, um, it's Frenzy Flowers or something like that, and then they have another leaf set on there that has three leaves on there with a little bit of a vine, so I'm going all around the edge, and making sure that you do stamp off your page also, because the leaves in nature would be going off the page, not just towards the center. That's what I just did there. And then here I've got a few leaves going off the page. Now I'm grabbing a whole mess load of little flowers that I from back in the scrapbooking days, but seriously, you could um, stamp some flowers and punch them out, or cut them out, you could punch some flowers and cut them out, just whatever it takes to um, get those flowers on. A lot of the flowers I could just push right directly into the gel medium, it was still on my sheet from the, um, when I did the vines, but a few of them I did have to put some gel medium on the back of those flowers to keep adding. And I just added as all the flowers I had, I wanted it to have a lot of flowers in there, so I just went for it.
in each is a permanent fee. And this stamp says, if you can imagine it, you can achieve it. I love that quote. And adding it to my art journal page here. I want to thank you for stopping by, and I hope you give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel at youtube.com slash